this tutorial is about easy ways to clean up your Google Drive. The online learning setup, Google Drive, is a very useful tool. Google Drive is a free web-based office suite and data storage service offered by Google. It enables users to create online documents and edit them collaboratively, as well as word processing, spreadsheets, and presentations. Google Drive offers a forms option that can be used to generate online surveys, collate them, and present the results. In the online learning, these forms can also be used for their exams. The Google Apps for Education is a package of free online tools including Google Drive compiled specifically for schools and colleges. It allows schools to set up email account for its teachers and students, facilitates shared calendars, shared documents, and even the creation of websites that can become class or project websites. It gives the administrator control to limit access to emails and sites. If you are considering setting up Google Apps for your school, it is advisable that it is done in consultation with your ICT administrator. Let us now dive in to these steps for easy ways to cleaning up your Google Drive. Number one, leave the shared with me alone. The shared with me section of Google Drive is just an aggregation of files that have been shared with you in some way. Many users want to clean up this section, but we suggest that you just leave the shared with me alone because these are not your files. Think of it like a feed showing you what files you have access um, and that these are not your own. If you begin deleting files, it can often cause problems for you or other users. So the best advice is just to accept it for what it is. However, there is a way to add these files to your own folders. You can add them to your drive so that you can organize your files and your folders. Even though shared with me may not be pretty and organized as you like, there is a way to add these files to your own drive and organize files into your own folders. When you have the shared file open, you see a drive icon near the top left. Once you click that icon, the file will be added to your Google Drive and you can organize it into a folder. Note that this is not making a copy. It is just giving you an access to the file in your drive. Number two, use consistent naming conventions. A naming convention is the way you name your files. This is an old school recommendation, but still handy. Even though Google Drive will let you name your files however you like, it's important to be consistent. Keep your file name short, but meaningful to you and to your students. A consistent naming convention will help you clean up your Google Drive. In most cases, there isn't any reason to include the name of the file name because Google Drive will allow you to see the file icon and filter by file file types like docs, slides, or forms. If you need to add a date, include month, day, and year. However, remember Google Drive will allow you to see the last time you opened or edited a file. So adding a date may not be necessary. If you need to abbreviate, I recommend using capital letters to help you remember. So Google defaults to display your files in alpha order. So this also helps you see things more clearly as opposed to naming them with different versions of the same file. Keep this in mind when you assign files in Google Classroom since Google Classroom will name each student's file the same and append their name to the end of the title. The bottom line is, choose the system that works for you and stick with it. Number three, organize into folders and subfolders. Once you have determined your naming conventions, you will want to organize your files into folders and subfolders. 
To see your current folder list, click on the drop down arrow next to My Drive. From here, you can easily click and drag files into folders. If you're organizing as you go, you can also just click on the folder icon from the application to move the file to a folder. To create a new folder from Google Drive, click on the new button and then select folder. You will then be prompted to name your folder. Remember to use your consistent naming convention. Be sure to pay attention to what you have selected before you create the folder. If you want it at the top level as seen above, select My Drive, then create the folder. If you want to create a subfolder or a folder within a folder, select the parent folder first. This will save you time clicking and dragging things around. Number four, color code your folders. Adding color to your folders can help you visually recognize files faster and give you additional ways to organize your Google Drive. To change the color of the folder from Drive, right-click or control-click on the folder, go to Change Color and select the color from the palette. You may really love color coding and color all of your folders, or you may be more like me and just add color to your most important folders so they stand out. Again, choose the style and method that works for you. Number five, try numbers, special characters, and hashtags. Numbering my files and folders has helped me keep my most important folders at the top of my drive, no matter what they are named. You can also try adding emoji and special characters. Adding emojis and special characters can add a little extra fun to your files and folders, and your students will love this too. Emojis can give you and your students a visual cue and help emerging and struggling readers, and as well as English language learners process the information. There are lots of ways to find and copy emojis into your files and folder titles. One of my favorite resources for this is Emojipedia, where I can search and copy emojis quickly on the desktop. I will try to put the link in the description box. Another way to help organize your files and folders is to use hashtags as we can use on social media. These could be words or numbers and you add the hashtag prior to that. This strategy could be overkill if you use it for everything, but it could be a way to personalize your files. Number six, use advanced search to find anything in Google Drive. This is a very helpful tool. You can use the drive search function. You can filter it by type, owner, keywords, dates, and more. Number seven, consider using shortcuts. Shortcuts allow you to manage your files or folders with quick links to the things you might need most or share the most. So with this, you can create shortcut to your drive for some of the most important files or the most common files or folders that you usually go to or access.
Next, try Google Drive Workspace. Take advantage of the new Google Drive priority page and custom workspaces to better organize your Google Drive as you work. Look for priority to appear above My Drive. And you can make the priority page your default home by going to your Google Drive settings. The priority is um, using machine learning to try to predict what files you will need next and making those available at the top of the page. Below priority, you will also see workspaces. Workspaces allow you to create a collection of files in one location. So use workspaces to organize files without moving them. In workspaces, you'll be able to see intelligent suggestions of related content to group together for easier access, like multiple files related to um, the same project. You can also create your own personalized workspaces, collecting any files you have access to, including content stored in your uh, My Drive and various Steam drives. Alternatively, you can right-click on any file and select Add to Workspace to dynamically group files as you work. And number nine, pace yourself. This is your journey. What works for others may or may not work for you, so this may take time. Don't worry, even a little progress is still a progress. Some quick questions. Which among these shared tips have you been using lately and how do you find cleaning up your Google Drive? Do you have other tips in organizing and cleaning your Google Drive? Please share it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.